we have approximately 600 of our full-time faculty, which is about 1,200 doing research. So 50% of the faculty are doing some type of investigative research. And the value in being at our institution is not just the fact that there is increased nurturing capacity, but also the facilities are top-notch in terms of what we have already. And faculty from all over the world like coming to Weill Cornell because of the esprit de corps here. They like working with the faculty that do exist here. And of course, they're an exceptional faculty. The key strengths of our faculty are clearly in the innovative way that they approach science and their willingness and desire to collaborate. It appears that by working with others that have common interests to what you're working on, you can find that your work will go along much more quickly. And by collaborating, your investigators may have reagents or certain animal models to study disease that you may not be working on, but that you, the ideas that you have could be easily extrapolated to what they are working on. And in this manner, you're, by going from bench to bedside, it can move with more alacrity. Um, on the fact that our faculty are, uh, are as innovative as they are, an index that is often used is the amount of NIH grant support that you have per principal investigator. And it appears that our faculty have a very significant amount of NIH support and it is on par with other faculty in the Ivy League. The greatest challenge to American medical science is determining the different causes of disease and being able to detect the causes of these diseases early on. And early detection is so important for extending our lifespan. Twenty-five years ago, we didn't understand some of the causes of the cancers that we are now all exposed to and experiencing. And many individuals across the country, there's been a human outcry for personalized medicine, for the development of diagnostics so that we can detect Alzheimer's at an earlier age than when we find out about it. Same with some cancers, the same with some um, various aspects of cardiovascular disease. We feel here at Weill Cornell and scientists I talk to all across the country that in this coming decade we're going to see greater advances in the understanding of disease and the treatment of disease than we've ever seen before. And it has to do with technology. That the new diagnostics that are now coming out are now proving to be very, very beneficial in picking up early cases of cancer, early detections of Alzheimer's disease, and early situations or symptoms involving cardiovascular disease. So in our lifetime, and certainly in our generation, that we will be able to see a whole new era in how we detect disease, disease and how we cure disease. I, I think that in, this, in the next 10 to 20 years, we will be able to eradicate a tremendous numbers of infectious diseases that people are exposed to across the world. We've made huge advances in the last 25 years, and undoubtedly we will be able to make those advances in the next 25 years. In the past 25 years, we've extended life. That uh, the lifespan of Americans increases two to three years every 10 years, owing to the different pharmaceuticals that have been discovered in order to prolong our life. The key quick question is, are these pharmaceuticals really benefiting the quality of life at the end? And that's what is the big challenge, or one of the big challenges in the next 10 years, is to produce the right pharmaceuticals, not just to prolong life, but also to make that increased lifespan a situation where you're living a higher quality of life. And that's the biggest challenge in, in, in modern American medicine.